In this Procreate tutorial, we're going to learn step by step how to draw this. We're going to learn how to use layers to create depth and focus, how to use the selection tool to draw and transform shapes, and if you watch the extended video, how to use blurs and adjustments to make our image really pop. Plus, we're only going to use four default brushes. Hard airbrush, soft airbrush, the flat brush, and the Nico rule brush. Let's jump into it. Today we're working on a 3840 by 2900 canvas. Color profile is set to sRGB IEC 61966 2.1. And we'll be using this color palette, which is available on my brand new Patreon. There are two levels. Level one is for general supporters and level two is called the drawing club. This is for people that want to maintain a regular drawing habit in a fun and friendly community. You'll get access to my ProGate color palettes and extended tutorial videos. You can check it out at patreon.com forward slash jaywalkerpictures. This artwork is split into three videos, and in this first video we're going to tackle three main problems. The first is laying the foundation. So the first thing we're going to do is do our sky. So we're going to go up to it into the palette menu and select dark purple. Uh, and then in our layers, make sure you have a transparent clear layer on top of our background. And we're just going to drag that color into the layer. Next, go up here and select orange. And then we're going to go into our brushes menu and go to the airbrushing section and select the soft brush. Uh, make it a pretty big size, maybe like 50%. And just zoom out a bit and just lightly start applying it from the bottom up. And we want to kind of make a nice gradient fade into our purple. So I'm just lightly pressing and then getting lighter as we go up. And then just going back down to the bottom and working in that, that really strong yellow. And if you find it's hard to blend it using just pressure alone, you can go in and use your color picker and just pick that in between color. And then just run it between the two just to smoothen out things. Okay, that'll do. Uh, let's create a new layer on top and we're going to draw Mount Fuji. So uh, go here and select magenta one, and then we're going to go and select hard brush and put it to a fairly small size, like maybe number two. Make sure it's on 100% opacity. And then if we cut this uh, image in half from the midpoint here, uh, start drawing our Mount Fuji. Okay, that looks pretty good. Uh, now what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to fill this bottom section and that's our silhouette of Mount Fuji. So create a new layer above that, and then we're gonna to go to magenta two. And now we're gonna do our next like layer of mountains. So we're gonna go from here, go like this. Now create another layer on top again for our next layer of mountains, magenta three. And that's gonna come in from here. Like that. Oops, make sure you close off these edges. Otherwise your fill is gonna flow out. Okay, next layer, let's go to magenta four. And this is gonna start over here. I think I'm gonna add a bit more. Okay, I do wanna move this up a bit. So I'm adjusting things, but I guess the thing to look out for is just having a nice balance of layers, and then also having enough space at the bottom here to be able to put um, our different layers of city that's gonna appear later on. So um, I need to move this up a bit more, and then also this layer down here, I need to bring this up a bit. Also just look for stuff that seems a bit too unbalanced or out of place or a bit too extreme. So for example, this drop off here is a bit too extreme. So I wanna soften that a bit. So I'm gonna grab that color just yeah do something like that okay next we're going to add our layers of city uh, so uh, go here and grab dark magenta one and the same brush again and this time we're just going to draw a straight line well not quite actually i'm going to do it like this so like this maybe at an angle like that uh, make sure it's closed off right to the ends yep okay so fill that now I'm going to get another layer on top, uh, dark magenta two, and then we're going to do the same thing, but this time at a different angle. So kind of like this, uh, but it's very slight. It's, it's not a straight line. It's not a fully parallel line, but it's also not very angled either. 
kind of like this. Okay. And then our last one, another layer on top. And we're going to do fully black. And this one is pretty much going to be horizontal, like maybe a slightly down. Oops, I didn't close it off. Rookie error. Okay, close it off. Um, and now I just want to tweak things a bit. So we're on a freeform transform. So that means I can just pull it up a bit. Oops. Just pull that control point up a bit because I don't want to move the edges. I just want to move the vertical axis. Uh, actually, I'm going to do it for all of these. So grab them all. In case I'm moving too fast for people, basically what I did was I had one layer selected and then I s slid to the right to multi-select those three layers together. And so now I can grab them and manipulate them all together uh, using this transform. I'm going to raise this up a bit. So we have more space to draw buildings in the city. Uh, you'll notice that we've lost a bit of the mountains in the background, so I'm going to bring them up as well. Pull this up a bit. Um, you'll notice now this one is overtaking the one beneath it, so I need to either bring that up. Bring it up a bit more. Uh, and then I'm also going to chop it down a bit. So this one, let's just use an eraser and bring it down a bit. So we have all right. Okay, so we're not going to go into any more detail. That's just kind of our uh, basic layout. And it gives us kind of the foreground, midground, and background. And we're using a couple of tricks to give that sense of foreground and background. You know, like as we get closer to the foreground, we're more saturated, more and more darker. We're fully black. And then as we move into the distance, it's more and more desaturated. Next, we're going to work on the snow cap. So uh, go up here and go to our Mount Fuji layer and create a new layer on top and make that into a clipping mask. And what that does is it's going to constrain anything that I draw on this layer to within um, the filled or opaque part of the Mount Fuji layer. So if I try to draw out here, it won't appear. But if I draw in here, it will appear. And so what we're going to do now is go to our palette and then we're going to choose the dark grayish purple and go back here and yeah, we're going to stick with the hard brush and we're just going to try to um, fill in this space. Actually, let's make this bigger. Uh, it doesn't need to be too accurate. We're just going to fill in kind of a rough approximation of the area. Okay, so now that I've got my rough shape in, what I'm going to do is uh, go to our eraser and I'm going to change the eraser to the airbrushing. And what I'm going to do is cut into this shape or this silhouette. And I just want to soften it up a bit, actually make that bigger. And you'll see you kind of get these soft kind of half opaque edges when you just kind of lightly brush the pen over the tablet. Just want to create some randomness and just make it a bit more natural. So um, there's actually dimples in the mountain surface as well. So you might see something like this. And that's where you've got like a hard edge on one side and then a softened edge on the outside. And you want to kind of make sure that you're paying attention to the contours of the mountain. So kind of add these details that contribute to that shape. So th this there's a sweeping formation through here, kind of like, so I'm just going to stay true to that. And then of course here, obviously gravity's pulling the snow down. So I want to stay true to that also, but also add some variation so it doesn't look so fake or simple, I guess. Um, maybe I need to zoom in a bit. And you'll notice like there's certain areas where kind of the snow fades into the mountain. Like for example, here, I'm softening it up a bit. But then there's other areas where it's like a really hard edge, like maybe there's a huge buildup of snow and it, and it just creates that really solid edge. 
So for example, like here, yeah, it's, it's pretty solid, but just soften it up a bit in some areas and try to vary that just to give it some texture and interest. All right, next we're gonna step it up a bit. So we're gonna stick with our eraser, but we're gonna jump into the painting section and then we're gonna go down to the Nico rule brush. And this is gonna give us a bit of extra texture. We're still cutting in, but now we're cutting in with a bit more texture. So make the size of the brush smaller. Um, let's start with 2%. Yep, and you can see how it's already giving us a bit of extra texture. Uh, I think we need to even drop it down to 1%. Okay, let's try that. And this is gonna give us those really tight highlights and shadows. So for example, I mean, when I zoom in, it's not really apparent. So let's cut into here. And that's already chopped up that big round circle, that round edge of the round brush. And it just makes it look a lot more natural. So let's cut in a bit more. Cut in. But just be careful with this because it is very strong and striking if you overuse it. Cut in. Uh, for example, there's a lot of round brush edges here. I want to cut into those. So you're kind of like highlighting or, or digging into the deepest darks, like the places that have the least amounts of snow creating dimples in the mountain. And like I said before, don't overdo it. So you wanna keep areas that are large. So for example, like here, just fully covered in snow. You don't wanna to have too much texture everywhere. Okay, and finally, I'm going to switch it up again. So I'm gonna go back to my brush and I'm gonna choose the uh, Nico rule again and we're gonna paint back in the snow. So for example, here I've erased too much. You can see this big round brush stroke. I wanna cut into that and bring some snow back. Just make it look more natural. Similarly here, anywhere you see big round strokes that look like a digital brush, <laughs> uh, just chop them down. I think I like it. I'm going to, actually there's a problem I'm seeing with the edge of this mountain. I want it to pop out a bit. I feel like it's too like this and I want it to come out a bit more. So uh, I'm going to select the layer that it has my silhouette and then I'm going to go to the liquify tool uh, and then I'm just gonna push it, so push and just push it out a bit. And you may need to do this a few times throughout your process as you start to see the mountain a bit more. So just on top of our sky layer, we're gonna create a new layer and then go into our color palette and then choose uh, red glow. And then we're gonna go back to our brushes and go to airbrushing and choose the soft brush again. And it's on a really large size still at about 50%. And then we're just gonna slowly work in a bit of a red color here and that's gonna be our sun. So generally speaking, the light is coming from low on the horizon from this direction. And now we're gonna get our orange glow color and just add a bit of that in as well. It looks very nice and juicy. Okay, uh, now we're gonna to go to our Mount Fuji layer and turn on alpha lock. And what that means is if I run the airbrush on my Mount Fuji layer, it's only gonna draw in the opaque parts of the layer. So let's change that to red and, and then turn the opacity down to 50% and just very lightly brush it over the Mount Fuji layer. And you can see it's turning kind of red and adds to that glow effect. Okay, uh, now we're going to do the same thing for the next layer down, which is this one. Uh, turn on alpha lock and then do the same thing again. Uh, just very lightly. We still want to be able to distinguish between the two uh, layers, but just have that bit of a red glow. Same thing again, alpha lock. Uh, I can put a bit here. Just very little, okay. And then next layer, same thing, alpha lock. Again, keep it very gentle. That's a bit too much actually. And you can already see kind of like that kind of really brought the image together and you know, you can see that warmth coming in from the side. Okay, so I took a break and I came back to it and actually I really don't like this overall shape of Mount Fuji and the shape of the snow cap. So I'm gonna rejig it a bit.
What I didn't like was I didn't like the shape going up like this too much. So I wanted to kind of come inwards a bit, be more of a mound. Uh, yeah, I think that looks good. Okay, so then push that like this. I just want this area to dominate more. And then I'm going to cut a bit more here. And the reason I'm changing the snow cap is actually because I realized that um, I want more of this like plain area and I don't want to define it too much with, I think I put too much of this, um, these holes in and I just want it to be a plain surface area that I can I use highlights to define and play around with. Okay, so I've completed the snow cap. Now we can finally move on to the highlights. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this layer because I just like to keep it, um, hide that one uh, just in case I need to roll things back. Um, and then I'm going to alpha lock this. So I actually want to just run a bit of this warm light all over the top of this cap and just kind of imagine the mountain as the basic shape that it is, which is kind of like a pyramid a rounded pyramid imagine that light wrapping around the mountain and we want to just really give that some form and define it so we're going to go soft brush and i'm going to go with the red glow first and we're still on a really big brush setting what's this 50 percent, 55 you know and around 50 percent opacity and just start out here just really gently and we just want that yeah that we just want to kiss the mountain a bit of that red Let's see Oops, that's too much. Okay. Okay, we're going to do the same thing this time. Just kiss it with the orange glow. Uh, actually, no, I'm just going to go with the orange and we're going to kiss it even less. So just a really slight. I'm going to bring this size down a bit. Yeah, something like that. And now we're going to create a layer above this and that's where we're going to add our detail layer. Uh, just hit that orange glow color and we're going to go with a hard brush again. No, actually we're going to go with the red glow. So go with the red glow, make that a clipping mask and we're going to add a hard edge here. Make that a bit smaller, make it around 3% and kind of just run this down the edge. <laughs> And then you can see like there's a lot of lines developing here, you know, a lot of round brush marks. We're going to fade those in by uh, selecting the color and kind of just, you know, reapplying it, you know, at a lighter, in a lighter fashion. That kind of blends it a bit, reduces the harshness. Uh, this is too harsh down here, so I'm going to paint that back a bit. Okay, and now we're going to look in here. So there's some interesting shapes forming in here. Uh, what I'm going to do is, yeah, we're going to try to define a bit of those, just a really light color. So for example, here you can see a happy accident with like the shadow. Uh, just pick that color and define it a bit more. And then we want to kind of add a very subtle ridge line along here. So, so if you zoom out, you can see it's really subtle, but beautiful. And I'm just going to try something. I want to see if I can add in some of this cyan blue into the shadow side, just to give it some vibrancy. So I'm going to bring this capacity right down. Just, yeah, just touch it. Uh, it's a bit too strong, but let me just fade it in. I don't know, it just adds a bit more depth and stops it from just becoming a muddy mess of like dark purple and red. Again, using the blue to kind of lighten up some of these dimples. You know, they're closer to the light source, so they shouldn't be so dark. You know, I think uh, they need to be lightened up a bit. Uh, but I don't want to lighten them with the highlight color, so using this blue just helps soften them a bit. This part can be as complicated or as simple as you want it to be. Um, more likely on the complicated side, 
but what you can do is either follow me directly and you know try to copy exactly what shapes I do or try to improvise it yourself uh, you know do your own structures and things like that there are two main things you need to keep in mind when we're doing this uh, the first thing is just the composition in general and how we balance we want this image to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to build kind of the silhouette of each of these layers of the city. And I want to build that silhouette to suggest enough forms to balance the image. So by that I mean I'll just um, create a new layer here. And you don't need to follow this part. I just want to demonstrate uh, kind of what I'm thinking about in terms of composition. So imagine we had the canvas split into thirds. So we've got, you know, like that that and like that uh, like that right and that's the famous rule of thirds so compositionally we want to try to keep the interesting parts on these uh, third lines uh, and so what I'm thinking of doing is including like a major structure or bunch of structures here and then maybe having some structures here and then maybe having a few more big ones on the side to build kind of a frame and I want to have kind of a feeling of like a frame like that and a swooping motion coming through there. So keep that compositionally in mind. Let me just remove that. And the second thing to keep in mind is the light direction. So as I said before, the light source is over here. So we're going to have buildings that are going to be lit with a, a bright light coming from here as it'll be quite red, like a red glow. Uh, and then you might have on this side kind of uh, a blue... Uh, shadow color or something like uh, kind of like these um, fog colors coming through to kind of pop out the the building and just give it a bit extra depth so just keep that in mind so composition you know how you arrange the buildings and then number two is going to be uh, the light direction and so if we keep those consistent you should come out with a pretty good drawing all right so what i want to do is i want to fill out each of these layers with a silhouette of buildings and the key here is just to get that sense of scale so buildings in the background will be smaller and thinner buildings in the midground will be a slightly larger and then buildings in the foreground will be larger again. So let's start with the midground and just make sure you select the color of the midground and I'm going to make sure I'm on that layer. Uh, maybe I'll just put it on a layer above it and I'm going to use the selection tool, a rectangle with color fill selected. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a large structure here right on our third line. Maybe I'll move that a bit over. So probably about here. And I'll put some more buildings next to it. That looks pretty good. Let's keep going. So the idea is I want this to kind of be like a mega mall structure or like a, you know, a shopping center, department store type thing. Uh, let's put some more on this side. So you kind of vary the widths of them as well. So don't make them all like uh, tall towers, kind of make them wide, some medium, some cutting into each other, maybe like that. That looks pretty good. Uh, let's go to the back layer. So we don't want to go too crazy with it. Um, we want to hit each layer equally just to establish that sense of scale. So I'm going to go to the back layer, select the back layer's color, I create a new layer on top of the back layer. So let's start defining the size of these buildings and make sure your selection tool is selected again, rectangle, color fill, and I'm just going to draw maybe one like this, like this. I'll put a, a significantly taller one in here. I'll put a big one in here. Put it next to another one. Maybe I'll put a couple here. Now we're going to jump to the foreground layer, so put a new layer on top of that and then select the color. And same thing, selection tool. Uh, I'm going to put a large wide building here. Maybe a couple more here. Okay, so I finally finished my silhouette. Uh, if you want, you can copy these silhouettes exactly as I have or try to do your own one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this file and upload it so you guys can pick up where I've left off. So what I'm going to do next is start by adding some of the highlights and shading to the city. 
And to do this, we want to try to stay pretty organized. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new layer above this uh, background layer. And this is going to be our highlight layer. I'm going to create one for each level in our city. Uh, and then I'm going to group them together. So group this one, group this one, and group this, group this one. Uh, let's rename these. So this is background, ground, city, ground, city. And then this one can be foreground. Okay, and let's go to our mid-ground city on our highlight layer. Let's just call this mid-highlight. We also need to make sure in our layers that this mid-highlight layer is set to a clipping mask. Okay, so go to the color palette and select red glow, then go to brush. Make sure you've got the hard brush selected on airbrushing. Uh, set it to a fairly large size, maybe about 15%, and then set the opacity to 15% also. Now go to our selection tool, make sure rectangle is selected and color fill is off. And we're going to drag as close as we can to this edge, maybe just a bit outside of it, uh, maybe to about this size. And then we're going to use our brush and paint that in. Just remember when you paint this, don't keep going over it, hold down once and then just paint so you got an even coating at that 15% opacity. So what you have right now is kind of like a 15% wash over the top of the original silhouette and so that means it's transparent but we want it to be opaque so what I want you to do is use the color picker pick that color then set your brush to hundred percent and then go over it again now if you zoom in a bit you might notice that you see how it's not quite flush with this edge so just grab your um, arrow tool make sure it's set to free form and just grab this control point to squeeze it a bit and kind of line it up it doesn't have to be perfect but as long as you know roughly it looks flush now we're going to do a similar thing for all the other buildings in this layer. So select that color. We can stay on 100% opacity and just grab our selection tool. Uh, and now we can actually just color fill. So select to color fill uh, on this building, for example. I'm just going to do this. Probably do it right down to about here. Uh, again, on this building, I'm going to do it again. Here, pull one from here. That kind of gives a sense of depth, like this building is overlapping this one. We can do something similar with this one. So just grab that, uh, maybe draw it about like that. Similarly here. Okay, that looks pretty good. We're going to move on to the next layer. So we're going to do the same thing, but for the uh, background city. So let's call this back. Make it a clipping mask and let's do the exact same thing for these background buildings. Okay, so the background layer is done. You can see I've tried to add a bit of uh, variation in terms of the width of some of these highlights and just make sure the background highlights aren't as wide as the mid-ground highlights because obviously these buildings are closer so they're going to be wider um, and then further in the back it's going to be a bit more detailed all right let's jump to the foreground so foreground city and make sure to set it to a clear mask and do the same thing there doesn't need to be as many in the foreground because obviously there's not as many buildings in the foreground so just be a bit subtle with it uh, don't go too crazy Okay, so I'm going to add something different here. I want to add actually some slanted roofs right in the foreground. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to grab the rectangle selection tool. Um, I'm going to do a big rectangle like this. Fill it. And then we're going to cut into it. So um, I'm just going to get a, an eraser. Um, maybe do the painting flat brush. Set it to about 2%. And then I'm just going to cut some random lines in. So maybe one here, uh, one here. Uh, I'm going to make it a bit thinner now. Do 1% uh, here. Maybe one here as well. 
Okay, okay, let's try this. So now I'm going to go and get my freehand selection tool. Just select that one section. Now do uh, my arrow tool. We're going to distort it and then just grab that control point and do that. Maybe something like that. Go back to my uniform transform, bring it down a bit, make them a bit smaller. Something like that. That looks all right. Okay. I'm going to grab this portion, copy and paste. Oops. And I just want to drag that. Oops. No. Drag it like that. Maybe just add some variation. Make it a bit slightly smaller, maybe. By this point, things got a little messy and my camera cut out recording. But basically, I put all the rooftops on a new layer, scattered them throughout the foreground, and made them varying sizes and clusters to feel somewhat random. By this point, you should have something that looks like this. Uh, again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another snapshot of this, and I'll give you guys the file of that so that uh, you can start from that point if you want to. So the reason I've separated the layers in the way that I have is because it enables you to adjust the brightness and contrast for each layer depending on the distance from the camera. So for example, let's say our background highlights are these ones. I can actually go to brightness and you know, I can reduce the brightness of that layer if I want to make it disappear. I can also increase the brightness to turn up the lights kind of thing. You can see that effect that's happening right there. I can also reduce the saturation and I can change the hue and you know, just adjust the color temperature based on the distance from the camera. Again, if I go to my mid ground city, um, that one might be more in focus. So I could make that punch even more, you know, increase the saturation and brightness and just really make that the focal point of the image if I wanted to. Uh, for now, we're just going to stick with what I've done, which is every layer is equal. The next thing we're going to do is the exact same thing, but for the shadow side of the buildings. So let's start with our mid ground. Let's create a new layer, call it, um, move it above the mid highlight. Let's call it mid shadow and make sure it is a clipping mask. And then we're going to go and choose our cyan blue color, um, have the hard brush selected set it to about 8% opacity, put it to a decent size, maybe 10%. Uh, now we're going to go in and grab our selection tool, make sure it's set to rectangle with color fill selected. Oops, no, color fill shouldn't be selected. Turn that off. And again, just don't bring your pencil off the stylus, just keep it down. So we do one pass of that shape. So again, this is an 8% opacity pass. We want to make that fully opaque so we're going to do a hundred percent and just run that over so we've kind of like created a new color now so let's deselect this um, and let's just adjust it slightly uh, go to freeform grab this control point and just expand it a bit uh, make it like that you might have noticed i went over one of the highlights so let's bring this underneath the highlight here like that okay so we're going to do the same thing across that entire layer for any shadows so let's grab our selection tool. Color film needs to be selected this time with the rectangle. Uh, and for example, I'm just going to grab this one. Nope. Grab this one. Something like that. For this building, I might do something like this. Okay, that looks pretty good. Uh, let's do the same thing for the layer behind it. Uh, so we go to the background city. Let's create a layer underneath the back highlight called the back shadow. Same thing again, selection tool, rectangle, color fill, and yeah, it's a clean mask. So let's go add that in. This might, this gets a bit tricky. So for example, see how I've kind of defined a bunch of buildings here and then I've got a building here, right? So obviously these sit in front of that, but if I go and do a shadow here, it fills in that 
that building behind it. Uh, but don't worry too much about that. I think we can fix that later. And it doesn't need to be exact. When it comes to the background, it's getting more and more abstract. So I wouldn't sweat those details too much. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Uh, you'll notice that it's really hard to distinguish like the background from the mid ground now because of that shadow color. So this is where the power of those layers is really gonna show up. So um, let's just go here to the brightness and slowly increase the brightness a little bit. Um, adjust the hue. And yeah, we can tweak this later, but just so it's a bit more visible. Uh, the back highlight, let's increase the brightness of this just to 52%. And I think for the back shadow, let's do the color balance and let's add a bit of, a bit more red actually. You just nudge it. Now, before I start tweaking things, let's keep going. Let's move on to the foreground for highlight. Let's do, okay, so let's create a layer. Clipping mask again, and this is going to be named for shadow. For shadow. <laughs> okay, so again, same deal again. Let's grab this color. Let's grab our selection tool with the color fill selected. And we're going to start adding our shadows in for these buildings. Don't, be, don't go too crazy with them. I'm actually going to reduce the brightness. They're too bright. Um, but yeah, make it 49% more subtle. And the houses themselves will deal with those later. That's too deep in the weeds detail. We just want an overall view of this city. And I can already see with this overall view that I feel like this shadow color, for example, in the mid-ground background is way too dominating. Uh, they're overtaking the original color that was like, you know, for example, this color. So I want to bring that back in more. So I'm just going to use an eraser, hard eraser, hard brush, bring it down to about 15%. Uh, make sure you're on 100% opacity and let's go to that layer. So the mid shadow and we're just going to, oops, that's way too big. Let's bring it down to 4%. Just going to bring that back a bit. The key thing about this part is actually seeing the city kind of as an abstract of squares uh, it doesn't need to be too literal like we're playing with visual language here you know like we just want it to look kind of aesthetically pleasing and with nothing that's dominating too much and creating a nice composition so i'm going to use these layers to my advantage uh, let's go to the foreground and highlight i think it's a bit too bright i'm going to bring that brightness down a bit to about 47 percent Okay, I'm gonna leave it now. Let's take a break. 